Assalamualaikum and good uh, afternoon to so, Prahim and Dr. Zani. Um, today I'll be presenting my Panagia project and that's an experimental investigation on turbine flume cooling using thermothermal liquid crystal techniques. Alright, um, so gas turbine engine is uh, any internal combustion engine that utilizes uh, gas as the action fluid employed to rotate uh, a turbine. So the development of this uh, gas turbine engine has started uh, already in 1790s and has undergone continuous improvements throughout the decade. So uh, what gas turbine do is it produces product, uh, either productive work or um, uh, property stars. And uh, gas turbine, uh, it may be operated by um, a car, propeller, farm, or even generator. But uh, the focus today is uh, obviously for extra propulsion. Right. So um, the thermodynamic of uh, modern gas turbine can be described using a uh, fundamental idealized friction cycle, which is given by the equation here. And uh, the efficiency is given by uh, 1 minus the turbine outlet temperature over turbine inlet temperature. So uh, as you can see, the significant uh, changes uh, can be uh, changes that influence the core power of and efficiency of the uh, uh, this efficiency of the turbine engine is the turbine inlet temperature. The power output of this uh, turbine, uh, the power output of turbine uh, gas turbine engine increases as the turbine inlet temperature increases. However, with the high operated turbine inlet temperature, the hot gas will be exposed directly to the engine component in the hot gas path which uh, demand distinct blade cooling. So this is a uh, wide cooling campaign for turbine engines. Alright, so and in this uh, uh, in this project, I will just uh, focus on flame cooling. So flame cooling is the uh, primary line of defense uh, for the turbine blade that cools the blade from extreme hot uh, turbine gases to, uh, by creating a layer of coolant over the surface yeah, that is vulnerable to the high temperature. So uh, what happens is that cool air is leaked uh, from compressor stage and channeled to the inner chambers of the turbine blade and ejected along small holes in the blade wall, which is uh, the uh, the cooling hole. So uh, this air produces a thin, cool, uh, protective coating along the outer surface of the turbine blade. Uh, so this is the illustration of lum cooling. As you can see, the coolant is injected from uh, through the injection hole and from a, a layer on top of the surface. Right. And then uh, this um, lum cooling can be can be measured in the form of effectiveness given by the equation here. Uh, the effectiveness equal to the uh, mainstream temperature minus the adiabatic wall temperature over the mainstream temperature uh, minus the turbine, uh, sorry, the temperature of the coolant flow. So, um, so over the years, the study of flume cooling uh, have focused uh, on the geometric and fluid mechanical variables. So example of geometric variables are pole shape, angle, spacing, arrangement, and pattern. And for fluid mechanical variables, uh, the, uh, it is the coolant to mainstream flow ratio of density, velocity, mass flux, uh, momentum, and etc. Right. Uh, so, uh, in addition to the effectiveness, the heat transfer coefficient uh, can also be affected by uh, coolant uh, mainstream interaction. So, the environment side of a cool turbine blade involves post convection process. So uh, the heat transfer rate to the surface uh, is given by the equation here, uh, which involves uh, the heat transfer of the heat transfer coefficient and the uh, temperature of the wall and mainstream. Alright, so um, the application of PLC uh, in research has been widely used for so many years in the field of heat, heat transfer, uh, visualization of heat flow and thermal mapping and many more. So this is due to due to the characteristic of the PLC, which uh, changes color that correspond to the change in temperature. So uh, PLC are optically active mixtures of organic chemicals that can be formulated to highly um, 
temperature sensitive and when used in certain conditions show many different colors as they pass uh, through the crystalline uh, state right and so these are the objective of the um, uh, study the this project the first one is to examine the effect of number of rows of cooling homes on the heat transfer coefficients and the flame cooling effectiveness with varying blowing ratios. The second one is to compare forward and backward injection on the flame cooling effectiveness with varying blowing ratio. So, uh, this is uh, like the summary, the parameters that we're going to um, vary and analyze in this uh, study. So, for design parameters, um, um, like I mentioned just now, there were two types of uh, um, variables. The first one is geometry. As for the geometrics, uh, the thing that were going, that were being uh, varied, were the number of rows and the um, forward backward induction. And now uh, for fluid mechanical uh, variable, the thing that were varied were the blow ratios, which uh, were uh, the blow ratios that were varied were 0 0.5, 1.0, and 1.5. And the performance parameters that we're going to see throughout the experiment is the heat transfer coefficient and uh, flame cooling effectiveness. All right, so um, so what are single and double rows? Basically, uh, single and double rows are the number of rows, um, uh, number of rows perpendicular to the mainstream flow. So uh, that is the definition of number of rows. And then. Um, all right, and then um, for forward and backward injection, as uh, you can see here, the coolant uh, for forward injection, the coolant is injected uh, with, with the same direction as the mainstream. However, for backward injection, the coolant is injected in the opposite direction to the mainstream. All right, so um. Before conducting the experiment, uh, there are two types of calibration that were being done. The first one were, was the uh, TLC calibration. This is to determine the, the intensity temperature relationship. So what was being done was uh, non-in-situ calibration where separate surface is used as the calibration surface rather than the actual test plate. And then... Um, the second calibration is the test rate calibration. Uh, the purpose was to determine the blowing ratios. So for experiment, uh, then after the calibration being done, so um, the blowing ratio test uh, was uh, being done. So there are basically four, thing, four uh, test plates. The first one is single forward, uh, single with uh, forward injection, and the, the second one uh, was double rows with forward injection, and the third one was single row with backward injection, and uh, the fourth one was uh, double rows with backward injection. So uh, this are just this is just the schematic uh, drawing of the uh, single row forward injection, and and then. Uh, this is for these uh, uh, double rows for forward injection. So uh, basically, this this is one. This one is for backward injection. The uh, per, the, the dimensions are all the same except for the injection angle. It, it is the opposite of the forward one, right? Uh, this is the same. This right. So and then um, after the uh, experiment being done, um, the data processing um, uh, phase uh, was uh, was carried out. So the raw image and data uh, were processed using MATLAB software to obtain the result for the experiment. And uh, data from the data logger software, which reads the temperature and also the voltage history of LED, as well as videos. Uh, that recorded the TLC play, the color play of TLC on the test plate will be used as an input for the MATLAB. So after after the after all the data being run inside the MATLAB, this is the result uh, for TLC calibration. 
So um, what we are go going to see is that uh, in this result is the average intensity of the PLC. So uh, as you can see, there are four sub images in in this uh, picture. The first one is the average uh, intensity against the number of frames. As you can see, there are two peaks here. Uh, the first peak indicates the heating process, and the second peak indicates the cooling process. So um, this peak uh, indicates the, the color play of the TLC. And next to it is the average intensity against time. So um, as you can see, it's just the same as the previous one. It's just that um, it is this one is against time. And on the bottom left is the surface temperature against time. This one, um, is, the data was being uh, extracted from the data logger, and this only shows the cooling process. And next to it is the, is the one that we're going to see. is It is the average intensity uh, against surface temperature. So um, from here, it can be seen that um, the TLC begins to uh, to change to to be active at 32 degrees Celsius and and about 36 degrees Celsius. Oh, no, sorry, 34. All right. So this one is the uh, normalized intensity, which is the average intensity just now, but it, it is uh, it was being rectified to eliminate the uh, noise, unwanted noise. And this is uh, uh, the result of um, a blowing ratio test. And um, there are four sub images again here. Uh, the first one is uh, on the upper left is the image sample. Next to it is the surface temperature. And uh, on the bottom uh, left is the heat transfer coefficient. And next to it is normalized temperature. Okay. So we will focus on the heat transfer coefficient. Uh, as you can see, near the cooling holes, this one is double rows uh, with at uh, 0 0.5 uh, blowing ratio. So uh, near the cooling holes, the heat transfer coefficient is uh, relatively low. But as uh, as it goes further downstream uh, to to the right, um, the heat transfer coefficient increases rapidly. This is due to the um, uh, might due to the, the high flow mixing of the uh, coolant and mainstream flow which cause the heat transfer, transfer coefficient to increase. And uh, it might also be because and uh, this is might due to the uh, jet flow phenomena as well where the coolant flow detach from the surface of the test plate which cause uh, the, uh, the high mixing uh, flow, flow. All right. So, and this one is uh, shows the film cooling effectiveness. Uh, again, um, around the cooling hole, the film cooling effectiveness is um, relatively high. Um, but as you can see, at the end, uh, the same place where the mm, there might be a high mixing flow, the film cooling effectiveness uh, uh, is low as compared to the other areas. So there are actually 12 sets of this result because uh, there were uh, four test plates uh, that were being tested uh, against um, uh, with varying blowing ratio. So uh, due to the time constraint, um, I won't be explaining everything. So we will proceed to the uh, conclusion. Right, uh, so based on the overall result, uh, flame cooling performance for single row is better than double rows for forward and backward injection. Heat transfer coefficient for single row cases are slightly higher than double rows. However, single row has higher film cooling effectiveness and provide higher coverage to the wall uh, in both injections. So, and it can also, uh, it was also discovered that as the blowing ratio increases, the effectiveness decreases for, uh, for all cases. And then a uh, different cooling performance for backward injection is better than uh, forward injection. But backward injection has higher, uh, higher cooling effectiveness for both single and double rows at all blowing ratios. However, uh, as the blowing ratio increases, the effectiveness decreases.
So in general, sampling effectiveness decreases as the blowing ratio increases in both forward and backward injection. And finally, uh, the overall film cooling performance uh, must consider both heat transfer coefficient and film cooling effectiveness. So that's it for me.